Maybe I'm not very smart, but when I go to U-Haul and I rent it, they tell me where you're going. I tell them I'm going to Florida. Then they say, here's your rate. So what did you tell U-Haul instead of telling them that you're going to Florida? This is the plaintiff, Karen Milliner. She says the defendant is her son, and he owes her money for a U-Haul she rented for him. Son or no son, she wants and needs her money returned. And if it takes this lawsuit to get her $2,142.94, then so be it. This is the defendant, Sean Milliner. He says the plaintiff, his dear mother, agreed to help him out. And now that he's happy and in a good place in his life, she's coming after him for this money for some reason. Bottom line, he was never supposed to pay his mother back and isn't going to now. He's accused of letting mommy down. All parties. Please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Ms. Milliner, you are suing your son for $2,142.94, the cost of a U-Haul rental in your name that your son asked you to take out for him. Why couldn't he just put the U-Haul in his own name? Because he was blackballed. He owed them. Oh, how did he get blackballed? He rented a U-Haul from them before I didn't pay. And kept the U-Haul for extra days. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Okay, so he's blackballed, so you rent it for him, and then he does the exact same thing that caused him to get blackballed. Exactly. And put me on the hook. You didn't for see it. this coming? You didn't see that no. coming. No. All right. Tell me what happened. On July 28th, I was at the dentist. I got a call from the defendant. Ma, can you do me a favor? Can you can you rent me a trail? I want to put my stuff in storage. So I said, well, who's helping you? He said, oh, I'm doing it by myself. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll meet you at your house. I met him at his house, and then we drove to the U-Haul place. We get to the U-Haul place, and she, he, he was talking to the lady that worked there. So he was like, well, I can't rent it on my own, so my mother's going to rent it for me. So I read, I signed my name to it, but he used his credit card to pay what I thought he was paying locally for Suffolk County. Okay. So and I you thought it was he was place. just going to rent it for a day, or how long did you think he was going to rent it for? For a day, I thought he was taking the stuff to put it in storage in Suffolk County. And then what happens? On the second, on the first, I get a call, I get a text from U-Haul, and it said for me to call them. I called them and they said that I had a balance because the the trailer was returned in Kissimmee, to Kissimmee. In Florida? In Florida. He got the local pricing, but he used it to go to Florida and returned it in Florida exactly. and then they wanted exactly. their other money. Exactly. But and if it's on if it was on his credit card, why didn't they just charge it on his credit card? They did. It wouldn't go through. They said it wouldn't go through. Mr. Milner, what's going on? Yes, yeah, so I was moving from Long Island to Florida, and my mother knew about the uh, U-Haul trailer um, incident that I had the first time because it was real last, last minute. We ended up, the place that we was in, there was a foreclosed house, so we had to move back. I didn't really have the money the first time, but she knew, and she told me that I didn't have to worry about it and that she would take care, take care of it because Ooh. I'm not going to make it in Florida. It's negative. They're miserable. They don't, they don't, they don't, like, they don't even love me. So she knew that I was moving to Florida. Why is there a bill I just of $2,142.94? I, 
I originally went there on my own to get it, and they knew that I was moving to Florida. But when I couldn't, when I could not get it, I called my, I called my mother, and she, and she has said, "Don't worry about the money because everything, because you know right. she had." Right. Here's the thing. I, maybe I'm an, stuff, so. maybe I'm not very smart, but when I go to U-Haul and I rent it, they tell me where you're going. I tell them I'm going to Florida. Then they say, "Here's your rate." So what did you tell U-Haul? Instead of telling them that you're going to Florida, because the reason there's a balance on the account is because it wasn't paid, because you paid less. So you probably was, didn't it, tell it them you were going to Florida. At first, it, at first it, it, it was storage, but then she knew. Cause I brought her her stuff to her house before I left. I told her, "Don't call me no more." I, I don't care if she me, knew. I'm trying to understand miserable. why you didn't pay for it if your credit card she, was because used to pay for because it that she's, day. Because she stated that then she was going to take care of it. Then why didn't you pay for the full bill? She stated that she was going to take care of it. She said she doesn't that look she was like someone who wants to take care of it. No, she yeah, doesn't look like she wants to take care of it. Because she's putting on a show. They're miserable. She's mad because I moved. After losing my twin brother and my father, they treated me like a piece of dirt. So that's why. That's why now we're, we are going through this. My when mother, they my sisters, like a... they live in that house miserable. And, and I'm not there. They always used to use me to come here, fix this, fix that. When the house got raided two days before I left, who was the first one that was there? Me, fixing her door, doing everything. But yeah, they don't call my kids. My kids can never sleep over. Whenever I, whenever I needed something, they would never help me, but I was always there to help them. But now that I'm gone and I'm happy and I'm living my life, everything is falling in, into place. Now we have to move backwards to this misery. I'm not dealing with that. So, right, but so here's the thing. Be... No, you are dealing with that. That's why we're in the middle of a trial, Mr. Milliner. Because I of have her. to determine because... whether or not you agreed to pay this amount and you failed to pay it. You're she telling stated me that she was going to that... pay it for me. Oh. Okay, you're going to have to prove that. Did you ever tell him you'd eat $2,142.94? Did you ever tell him you'd eat that? No, as far as I knew, it was going into storage in Suffolk County. And that's what he paid All right, for so I'm looking at the texts them. she Contestless. sends to you. I, and excuse me, ma'am. Pay your bill, loser, $2,112.94 to U-Haul, and I will stop texting you. To which you respond to your mother, stop telling people you paid me rent. You effing liar. And she responds, whether I did or didn't, you effing loser, pay your U-Haul bill, twenty one twelve ninety four, and your errands no. and the bill you left with the barber shop. It turned into misery. This was nonstop. I should have never. I had to block her Ms. phone Mr. number. I had to Mr. Block Milliner, I am not Dr. Phil. I am not a therapist. I'm trying to figure out who was supposed to pay the bill, and then that's she the person who's going to pay the bill. She, she stated... I know, you keep repeating yourself, but we're going to look at right, the text, because you know what the text... That's what I'm going to stand The text stand happened before there's a motive to lie. So let's look at the text, and what do the text say? I should have never rented the trailer for you. The whole family, she says, is going to know how grimy you are. And that's, and that's and what she did. She started calling and family, calling respond, me a deadbeat. Like, come on. And then you respond, oh, that doesn't sound like somebody who said they were going to give it to you. It sounds like you're lying when you say that then. Okay, you haul the only thing. Well, that sounds like you know you're supposed because to pay of, the U-Haul. Because, no, because I'm tired of her texting me. You don't understand what I, what I go through with her. We can, we can, I can stay my case. If she wins, she wins. If she loses, she, she loses. After today, she can treat me as if I'm still dead. I don't want to see her. She don't text me, don't call me. I just want this over with. I want this part of my life done and over with, where she could go live in her own miserable, negative household. I'm done. I'm done. She's wrong. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not wrong, and I just want it to be over with. I just want it to be over with. I have no mother. I'm done with her. Well, whether you like it or not, you do have a mother. You respond the U-Haul is the only thing, which is you acknowledging that you owe the U-Haul. And she yes. responds, no, F you. I wish Stephen and your father were still alive. They would have kicked See? your grimy behind. See? Yeah. And that's your, yep. your and this is father what I and your on a regular basis. brother? Yeah. My twin brother. That I had twin girls born the same day that I lost my father. So all that negativity that she go through, I don't care no more. I'm living my life, and I'm living my life for me and mine. She can stay in her household and forget about me. Just that simple. She don't got her, she don't got her other twin son, her husband, or she don't got me. Simple. I am going to rule in favor of Ms. Milliner. It's obvious that you were yeah. supposed to pay this. I think you feel nope. that maybe she owes it to you. Um, I think that's what's going on. But uh, I am, They used uh, me. They used the... me. And I don't care.
given the text where you say, okay, the U-Haul is the only thing I owe. Um, because I, I learned how to stop texting. The thing you owe. $2,142.94 okay. verdict for the plaintiff. Sean, Sean Milner, let me ask you, Sean, the, the court case is over. The judge is found against you. Um, how do you feel about it? What's your reaction? My reaction is that now this part of my life is finally done and over. As she stated in text and as she always said, she was her other son and her husband was here instead of me. They can't use me. She's more miserable about that because now I'm done. I'm, I'm winning in, in the end. You can feel that way, but uh, legally it's a different story. Ms. Milner, let me ask you how you feel about what your son has been saying here. He, he, he obviously wants nothing to do with you. It's fine with me. Good riddance. I just wanted him to pay the bill, and it's getting paid. So you're not concerned, huh? Doesn't bother you? I'm, you don't I'm want anything to do with him either, do you? Like, no. No. All right. What a tragedy. Indeed, what a tragedy. A family falling apart right in front of us. He came to court and said, well, uh, this was a gift. She just gave it to me as a gift, and it was intended as a gift. But the texts between mother and son tell a different story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, and if you just... have no proof that it's a gift, see, when, when, when someone says, uh, he's supposed to pay me back, mm -hmm. and the other person says, no, this was a gift, you've got to prove it was a gift. And right. so if there's no proof, then you look at the circumstances when a judge is trying to decide, is this a loan or a gift? When it's 2000 something dollars, right. because you told U-Haul you were doing local, right. and then what you do is take a U-Haul to another state, I think you away. know that yeah. that's you know, not a gift. That's two grand, right. you know? And if he's complaining that they treated him poorly, his mother was never going to bestow two grand upon him. No, I mean, yeah. really, come on. Uh, it was almost 2,500 bucks for this trailer. I don't know exactly what they cost, but you could probably buy a used, uh, you know, four by eight or five by seven, whatever size small trailer uh, for for that. For I that think number. I think he w he probably told his mother, "Oh, let them just blackball you." Right, right. Because that's how he runs his life. Just walk away. Right, right. And she wouldn't do it, and that's what he's so mad at. So Kurt wants to know this. Hey, Harvey. Can a business legally refuse to accept bills greater than $20? Isn't money money, and shouldn't all denominations have to be accepted? Well, they can put a sign up, and I've seen this before where they say, look, we're not gonna cash anything bigger than a $50 bill. There is nothing illegal about that, especially if it's a large denomination. So, you know, look, there's a lot going on in this country and a lot of things that are really tough right now. This is not one of them. That'll do it for this case. Litigants for the next case inside the courtroom. This is the plaintiff, Jill. She says she gave the defendant a DJ, a deposit for a party she was having. And when the state of Connecticut shut down, her party was canceled. The defendant refused to return her hard-earned money. And she's suing him for the $1,191.25. She says she's rightfully owed. This is the defendant, Ronnie. He says he tried to accommodate the plaintiff with another date, but she wouldn't budge. Then she went and trashed him on social media and the local chamber of commerce. Give her a refund? No way. He's accused of letting the music die. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that the defendant, a DJ, won't Jill refund her Ronnie deposit after she had to cancel her party because of the pandemic. The defendant is saying he's willing to give her another People's date, but session. she won't budge. It's Maryland the case of the day the Litigants music died. Sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Jill, talk to me. What happened here? Um, so back in 2019, I planned for a uh, B'nai Mitzvah for my kids. And it was scheduled to be on October 10th of 2020 uh, at Hotel Zero in Danbury, Connecticut. And with that, I now, hired Mr. Now, a B'nai Mr. Mitzvah. Tell, explain to me what a B'nai Mitzvah is. Okay, so I had two kids, a son and a daughter, who were having their bar and bat mitzvah together. Okay. So that's that. I knew that. I knew that, uh, but I just, you know, okay. want to make sure America knew. All right, so okay. you have twins, a boy and a girl, and they're each having their party together. And then you hire Mr. Ronnie. You're a DJ? Yes, Your Honor. 
And how did you hear about him? Did you hear him somewhere? Somebody recommend him? How did you how did you find out about him? Actually, I just did an internet search looking in my area and his name came up because he's about 20 minutes away. Okay. And then what happens? So we met and we really liked him. So on November 6th of 2019, we signed a contract with him and I put down a deposit of $450 at that time. And then on or about March 3rd of 2020, when COVID was starting to make its way into New York, um, I did reach out to him early on in March and asked him what would be his policy for cancellation or refund at that time. And he said that there was no refund of any deposit, but we probably would be able to reschedule if that needed to be, but not to worry yet. So in good faith, we moved forward, gave the second deposit of 225. Right, hold on one second. I wanna see the email you sent him because I read that and it didn't look to me like you were saying, COVID is coming barreling at us because you, you know, pe people were pretty ignorant still on March 2nd, starting with me. Um, so I wanna see that email. Here we go. Due to some unforeseen issues, I'm not sure that the kids will be having their B'nai Mitzvah as planned. Not due to COVID or, hey, I'm worried about a pandemic, it's due to some unforeseen issues. That kind of implied that you had your own reasons. What is the last day I can receive a refund? I'm trying to make a decision this week as to what to do. And he says, sorry, no refunds. And then you send right. him another payment. So the party's on. I did. And then, right. and then in Syria, in, in all full floor, San Flagante Delecto by the mid-March, you know, starting to be end of March, uh, our walls come crumbling down. And right. then what happens? So two weeks later, as you know, COVID came and Connecticut was put down on lockdown. So on May 18th, actually, the um, Hotel Zero Degrees actually canceled our event after Governor Lamont's order saying that all indoor parties can only have 25 people. And that included any and all staff that worked. So with that, now, we were forced to cancel. Now, your party was going to be how many people? 125. 125. And the contract that you have, let's take a look at the contract. The contract that you have with Mr. Ronnie says it's 125 people, right? Right. Yes. So then what happens? So they canceled and then we reached out to Ronnie and decided that we were not going. He offered us to have a different date. But as you know, with Bar and Bat Mitzvahs, the date that they have is kind of the date that they have. They've learned portions of their Torah for that date specifically. So we were not never going to plan to reschedule it. So we reached out. We tried to be reasonable. Um, I got nowhere with him. I, I called the Chamber of Commerce, seeing if they can help me. I called the Better Business Bureau. Finally, I went with an attorney who reached out to him, and he specifically said that he'd reschedule, but he's going to do absolutely no refund. Um, he actually even reached out to my venue and asked them if they would write a letter stating that I canceled and not them. And I actually sent you a copy of that. They called me and forwarded me. Yeah, that was rather letter. peculiar. Um, and, I, and I'm going to get into that with him. But according to your venue, he called and said that he wanted something from them that said that you could still have a party. It would just have to be a smaller one or whatever. Now, had your venue told you, well, you can have a 10 person party or you can have a 15 person party and then cancel because you don't want a 15 person party. Like, in other words, how did it go with the venue? The venue sent me an email stating, and I think I forwarded you that as well, that it, they canceled all events through the end of the year. They all didn't events. offer anything okay. else. I could have rescheduled okay. for another time in 2021, I guess. But again, that was never right. an option I got for it. us. Mr. Ronnie, talk to me. Um, you know, this has hit everybody very hard. I'm sure that yes. the people it has hit the hardest are the venues, the DJs, the party planners, yeah. the caterers. I mean, it's hit everybody hard. I hate picking out one, pretty, but, but the litigation right. that I seem to have at all hours of the night and day seems to be exactly right. this. So um, talk to me and tell me why it is that you should be able to keep the deposit. When she tried to cancel prior to COVID, you know, clearly stated in the contract that if, if, if the client cancels for any reason, any payments made, you know, will be considered liquidated damages. So knowing that she, you know, proceeded with the event, uh, moving the contract forward, and, you know, we 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 reserve the date for her. Um, you know, nothing in the mandate really really prevented us from providing the service that we were going to be providing on the day that but we. But what are you going to do? It. You're going to be a DJ. Venues, yeah. I know, but there is because she can't have it. Yeah. The venue closed down, shut down for the rest well, of the I year. Asked, um, when I spoke, and so what are you going to do? Play music in your backyard? I mean, really, can you really comply with what the intent of that contract was? And you're right. Well, she did I, try to cancel first on you. But 
in fairness, right. she should try to say, well, I'm not sure we're going to do this for whatever reason she has and I'm not pressing her on. But then after that, she paid you the other part of the deposit. So right. she wasn't trying to weasel out of this. She paid the other 200 and something dollars, which means full steam ahead. And then COVID right. happened to have happened. So how, Mr. Ronnie, like what if... Sometimes I have your side really invested in it, like they've paid for linens, they've bought decorations, they've done this and that. What exactly has a DJ done in preparation? Well, it's not really. I mean, when you, you know, when you, when you, we, we, we met, we, we had a consultation. When somebody reserves a date, you book that date for them. And then what you're saying is, I'm committing to your event. I'm no longer going to take any other business that I make yeah, for that Yeah, absolutely. Date. So, but there is no other business yeah. you could have taken. We now know that because there's a shutdown in your state. So it's not like you were going to yeah, take not, other business. You can take other business. That's that, that's not really true because we've done we've done other weddings uh, in the month of September and October. So yeah, people had to modify their guest counts. What was the date? Outside. What was the date of the party yeah. supposed to be? October 10th. So, anyway, so, so you say so you've done other parties. What's the biggest party you've done? 75 to 100, and that's a combination oh. indoor outdoor. It but was, see, that's not the party she hired you for, though, right? She hired you for an indoor party at a venue that can't have it on a date that the venue won't have it uh, to play music for 125 people, which can't happen. And and I hear what you're saying. You don't want to give the money back because you know really um, you saved the date and everything else. But she's trying to get the money back. When is it May? When you when you're saying, look, this isn't going to go yeah, forward. Five, I want my money back. Well, well, five so, five months. So these parties, months, you could have, right? So so then you had five months to go ahead and rebook the date. Were you able to rebook the date? Because no, because we we were trying to work it out with her to do to do another to do. No, no, she already event. told you she's not and, doing it. No, no, but and, another event wouldn't. Excuse me, excuse me. Another event would not have been that date. I am asking you if you were able to rebook that date. What's the answer to that? Did you play on October tenth? No, did not. But that's not to yeah. say that the first okay. five months that I held a date, I could have gotten, you know, I, I could have gotten another offer to do another Which date. Which you also would have had to return the money for. Now, let's discuss what ended up happening, well, by the way, with your kids. What have you decided, Jill, Miss Jill? So on October 10th, we had um, 10 people and we had a B'nai Mitzvah and no party, no nothing because we weren't allowed it. And we weren't allowed more than 10 people in the synagogue. So that was it. It was beautiful, but there and was no party. Right. And what, your kids aren't demanding the party at some point? Actually, they're not, to be honest with you. I think they understand. They've been out of school for, you know, how many months now? They understand that everything's very different now. So I'd be no. demanding the party. I don't understand these kids <laughs> it was for going 125 gifts. You know, you, you talked about 125 people and you say that it was inside. Had, had there not been COVID and she wanted to do the party outside, we would have accommodated outside. If she wanted, if she, if it turned out that she had 250 people, that wouldn't change anything that we did. We would still provide the same service. So it works. It right. works in her direction in one way, but in the other direction, no, it, it doesn't. And by the way, but I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because in your contract, one of the things you say is that if there's an act of God or a force majeure, I don't have to perform. Well, if it works for you, why doesn't it work for Jill? If, That's exactly prevent, what you say in if, your contract, but you don't want it to work that way with her. No, 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 no. If it prevented us from not being able to provide service, which we can, there's nothing in the in in yeah. what she's claiming. No, Mr. Ronnie, I disagree with you. Ms. Uh, Ms. Jill, let me ask you a question. You're yeah. demanding legal fees, but where in that contract does it say that if if it gets to court, you'd be entitled to legal fees? It doesn't. Okay. Yeah, that's that part. I don't know. He wouldn't. We couldn't get anywhere. So okay. I hired an attorney. He spoke to my attorney. My attorney sent letters to him. He's tried to settle this, so this right. would have been uh, settled months ago, and that just never... But the way... Wouldn't... Right, I understand. And But the way it works is you have to have a legal entitlement to attorney's fees to get them. Like, in other words, sometimes it's in the contract where, you know, and, and his side, the vendor, will put it in the contract because they want their legal fees if they have to fight. And then there's uh, a concept in the law that that's it, once that's in a contract, there's reciprocity, and that means you too could avail yourself. Or... It has to be a completely laughable defense, which this is not a laughable defense. Um, so you're not entitled to the attorney's fees, but I believe that you are entitled to get your money back. And I'm ordering him to pay you back the $675. Good luck, folks. Thank you. So the judge finds for the plaintiff. She gets her $675 back. I'm sure Ronnie, the defendant, uh, the DJ, is not too happy about that. What are you thinking, Ronnie? Uh, well, you know, you, that, that's the reason why we're here. I'm going to respect the, uh, the, the, the judge's decision. And uh, I don't necessarily agree with it, but, but you know, it's her decision, and, uh, and uh, I'll honor that. All right, Jill, how do you feel about this? I know you tried to work it out. 
uh, before going to court, but it, he, he wouldn't cooperate there. You had to go to court, right? Yeah, there really was no choice. I mean, it's we hired him to perform a service and the service wasn't performed and we needed our money back. And I'm grateful that we were able to get it. All right, well, good for you. Congratulations. Sorry you couldn't have the party. Uh, it's kind of interesting that she spent 500 and something dollars for a lawyer to get 600 and something back, isn't it? Yeah. I got a right. feeling maybe the lawyer's kinda, a friend and not yeah, going to charge her. But Kind of good money after bad if you did, <laughs> right? These cases are tricky. I mean, they're all very fact-specific, these COVID cancellation yeah. things. And they, they're, all, they're all different, and the equities vary. And uh, I guess, really, in this instance... Your take is he really could not have performed as as contemplated by I just think, contract. you know, of all the vendors uh, in the world, the DJ is the one that really doesn't have to do anything until the night of the party. Literally right. has nothing to do until the night of the party. Maybe a, a week before when they're right. sending him lists of what songs. Right. Maybe that's when he starts working. So, you know, we've had cases that involve the party planners and there's a lot of work in it. We've had cases... That, you know, I mean, th those are, it's just, it's like you said, they all, they're very fact specific. Very it's different. not like, hey, vendors, everybody get back the money. It's not quite like that. Uh -uh. They're all very much, they rise and fall on the facts of their own case. And of all, of all the people who doesn't have to do anything, it's the DJ. And the DJ who, whose contract says if there's force majeure, there's force majeure. So Tanya wants to know this. I love this one, by the way. Um, hey, Harvey, tenant's package was stolen from the front stoop and now his tenant is holding him responsible and deducting money from his rent. Can he do that? I mean, here's the thing. Um, if somebody puts a package on the front uh, stoop and somebody steals it, if the landlord didn't tell the delivery guy to do it, I don't see any liability on the landlord's part or the tenant's part. I mean, this is just one of the byproducts of this pandemic where people are going around and stealing these things. And it is something to think about when you're getting a delivery. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case inside the courtroom. This is the plaintiff, Samantha Gardner. She says she was asleep one night when the cops woke her up because her parked car was involved in a hit and run. Luckily, she tracked the defendant down. The woman owes her $3,661.66, and she's suing for just that today so she can get her car fixed. This is the defendant, Melinda. She says her truck was stolen by some miners who took it for a joyride. Luckily, the cops caught the kid, and she's sorry, but she didn't cause the plaintiff's damages and owes her nothing. She's accused of crashing and dashing. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant's truck crashed into her parked car and the defendant will not do the right thing and pay the damage. But the defendant says the truck was stolen and the joyriders crashed into the plaintiff's car, so she owes her nothing. It's the case of smashing and dashing. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Gardner, tell me what happened. Good day, thank you for having me. So I was sleeping in my bed about midnight when my door, uh, my door knocked on and I realized it was a sheriff. She said, um, your car is involved in a hit and run, but I don't want you to have any altercation with the owner of the truck. Cause I told her I wanted to come downstairs to see what's going on with my car. So I walked down to my car with the officer and the truck was piercing down on the side of my car, the passenger, the passenger side. But because the cops said I should not say anything to the defendant, I just had to look at what was going on. So I took pictures of the truck on my car and the license plate number. That's all I had to depend on um, until I get the crash report. That's where I got Miss Melinda's name from, address from, and everything so I could file the claim. Okay, but the police also told you what had happened, right? Like they gave you more information than just that. The they told you that, the that mm -hmm. Ms. Melinda's car had been stolen, correct? Yes. No, the, the cops on the scene, when I came downstairs, the cops, they were talking and she said the, the truck was stolen. But Miss Melinda went inside her truck to back her truck out to remove it from my car. So had she called a tow truck to have the, the, the truck properly removed from my car, 
My car wouldn't properly uh, remove a tow money. truck. There's only one way to remove no, the I'm car. That's to put it in reverse and drive in reverse. But M Ms. Melinda, tell me what happened here. Um, I was at a soccer game and my truck was broken. A into soccer game and where? Stolen. Orlando. Orlando where? Explorium Stadium. Okay. How many people are in the state? Like, is it a big stadium, a small stadium? Was this a professional soccer game, a high school soccer game? What was it? It was about uh, 5,000 people for the Orlando City MLS soccer game. And what happened? While we were attending the game, my truck was broken into and stolen um, after the game. Just a moment. Back up, back up, back up, back up. You left your purse with the keys in the car. Yes. Why? They don't allow us to have any bags in the stadium at the time. So we locked everything up in the truck. My purse was hidden in the back seat underneath everything. Nothing was left inside. Did you? So I'm we sorry. took the bare Hold minimum on. inside. You put, stop, stop. You put your purse where? In the trunk or under the seat? Under the seat. I don't have a trunk. Right. If you had put it in the trunk and taken your key fob with you, they wouldn't have been able to steal your car. Obviously, you had a key trunk. inside of the purse. No, they were in the armrest. Why? Because we weren't allowed to take much inside the stadium, so we took the key. Fob much? Are you allowed to take your car key? I bet you you're allowed to take your car key into the stadium. I bet you you are, right? You probably, <laughs> yes. probably are, right? Because I don't really care if you take your makeup or your magazines or anything else in your purse. I care if you leave your keys in the car. Why? because this is exactly the kind of stuff that happens, okay? This is how joy riders get their joy. They find the opportunity, they see the keys left inside the car, and then, in this case, it was property damage and some extensive property damage, but in a lot of cases, it's death. And in fact, many states have laws making it criminal for people to leave their keys inside of the car. And Florida tried to pass that bill recently, all right? Now, having said that, and I know that's your argument, Ms. Gardner, well, she left the keys there, and your second argument is, oh, she made it worse when she pulled the car away. Did you pull the car uh, away from the, are you the one that drove it out or your boyfriend drove it out? My boyfriend was instructed by the police officer on how to back the car off of Ms. Gardner's car to prevent any damage. There's no other, there's no other, there's no properly tow truck anything. There's just one way, put it in reverse and pull it out. What did the, what did the police say? Did, was there, did the police say there was some special way? Yes, they tried to have Ms. Gardner move her car forward just a little bit to see if it would be easier to come apart that way. But it just seemed to be easier for us to turn the wheel and back away from the car because it wasn't there wasn't very much contact. It was on the bumper only. So it literally just had to but be there, separated like there's, this. There's some serious damage to her car. I mean, you're saying there wasn't, that it was a minor, but it's not minor. I mean, that, that's, that's a lot of damage to that car. Welcome back to the People's Court. So it's undeniable the defendant's truck crashed into the plaintiff's car. What is up for grabs right now is that apparently uh, that truck was stolen and the kids who stole it were actually arrested. Let's go back into the courtroom. Here's the thing, Ms. Gardner. Um, Ms. Melinda wasn't driving. Ms. Melinda's car was stolen. You want me to decide that because of the way she, her boyfriend drove it away, well, you're not suing her boyfriend anyway, you're suing her, but, but the way it was driven out, somehow that caused the damage. But you have, you're just making that up because you find yourself in the unenviable position of not having collision insurance yourself. So your insurance company, you don't have the kind of insurance that pays for this, can, or you would have gone through your insurance company, right? Can I, can, I, can I explain what happened? Can you answer what I just asked? Can you answer what I just asked? Yes. Do you have collision? No, but can I explain why? Okay. Okay, so what happened is that I was shot in my head by a stray bullet, and I did surgery oh to remove the bullet. I, I did surgery to remove the bullet and unable to work. So I'm waiting on SSI disability and the insurance for my car is very high. So I call the, um, the insurance company to find out what can they remove from my policy to lower my payment until I start getting my disability. And he said, 
what's causing the, the bill to be so high is your collision and your comprehensive coverage. I said, okay, I will temporarily remove it until my situation changed. I could put the coverage back. But unfortunately, when did you remove the same it? day, the same day no. I removed the coverage. No, the same. no. It happened the same day that you had removed the coverage? On the 14th, yes. The same day. Oh, no. What bad luck. I cannot believe the that. Same, That's awful. The same day. Oh, same my. Day. Oh, my goodness. The same exact day. The same day. That is awful. But it doesn't change the law. The law is that when a car is stolen, it is not the owner's fault that it's stolen. And the law is further that even in a situation like this, where the owner leaves the keys in the car, it's still not foreseeable that not only will someone steal it, you don't expect that someone's gonna steal it just because you left your keys there, but that they're gonna drive recklessly and, and have a crash. The law is extremely clear that the owner of the vehicle is not responsible under these circumstances. That's why her insurance company denied your claim over that. And now, these, the people who were in the car, did they find them? Um, three of them, yes, that we know of. How? There were several. Well, there was um, two females that fled when they parked the truck. They arrested the two females that were on scene as they were running away from the truck. Oh, they caught him? Like physically yeah, caught him running? Yes. Yes. Oh. And the male got and away. And they but must have told them who... They, then they told them who the male was and they got the male. So what's yes. going on with the criminal case? Because you're the victim on that case. Uh, what's going on with the criminal He's case? He's being tried. He's in the is process of being tried. Is it an adult or is it a juvenile? Him. He's a minor. He's a juvenile. A minor. See, and that's really where the problem lies. That's where, you know, this happens all the time. All right, listen to me. You have a very fortunate circumstance. Who was the driver, the male? Yes. Right. Unlike most of these cases where it's hit and run, we happen to know the name of the driver because the kid got arrested. So that's who you sue. Now, does he have insurance? Probably not. Will insurance cover him? Maybe not. But the person whose fault it is, is the thief. So before we let you go, my staff is going to figure out the name and address of the perpetrator have, and nobody's told you the name and address of the, of the kid that got arrested, right, Ms. Gardner? I never know that anyone was arrested, so it must have been after I left. Yeah, I don't know. But apparently there are three defendants. One of them was driving, and the one who's driving is who you have to pursue. But my verdict in this case is for Ms. Melinda. You still shouldn't leave your keys in the car because this kind of thing can happen. But under the eyes of the law as it stands now, she's blameless for the damages. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Ms. Gardner, how do you feel about the outcome of this case? Are you surprised at the judge's verdict? I was just prepared, open-minded. It's, it's just one of those things. It's an unfortunate situation. Yeah, it's just very unfortunate all the way around. All right, well, good luck to you, Ms. Melinda. Let me just ask you, I mean, do you, obviously, I, you feel sorry for her. You feel sorry for yourself, too, don't you? Yes. How, how badly was your car damaged? Um, it was pretty damaged. It's um, damaged on all sides. I had to pay to get my car repaired. You had to pay? Did, did you have insurance to cover yours? I did. You did. Okay. Well, that'll have to wrap it up for this case. Good. You know, you're lucky. But, but as the judge said, keep your keys in your pocket next time you park somewhere. Okay. Pretty incredible course of events for poor Miss Gardner here. I mean, just unbelievable. First, she gets hit by a stray bullet in the head. I'm sure no one's going to be standing by to pay her medical bills for that uh, if it's a stray bullet. And shortly after that, a stray stolen car smashes into her vehicle and causes on all of this damage. On the day she cancels? On the day she cancels the insurance. My God, it's like getting hit by lightning twice in the same month. It's just, Thrice. God, God willing, she's got a blessed and lucky life the rest, the rest of the way. Uh, but really, the plaintiff wasn't able to present proof that the car was really damaged by backing it off. Not really. She's just saying, car. oh, she should have called a tow truck. They would properly remove it. Are you kidding me? No, they, they wreck everything. Yeah, they're <laughs> they'll, they'll destroy They'll the destroy oh the car. And every, yeah, that's, uh, right. yeah, because they're gentle. They're usually no, really, they're detail people. Oh, no. Oh, goodness. That's... Out of time. We'll see you next time.